Hey, how's it going? Richard here, Outdoor Tech Stuff. Today we're going to do a little video on what's going to be in my pack for the Lone Star Hiking Trail. So I have the ULA circuit right here, all packed up. Uh, I'm going to go through it, um, tell you just pretty much this is everything I will have. Uh, cl clothing without, um, well clothing and all the other gear that I have in here of course. Um, no food, no water. That, of course, will come uh, later. And uh, we'll just start with um, the outside and we'll work our way in. Uh, this through hike is going to be a six day, five night. Can maybe turn into a seven day, six night if I get slow, but um, I'm aiming for six days, five nights. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I have done a video on the ULA circuit. It's a great pack, it weighs under. 41 ounces, I believe. Um, super lightweight. It's it's pretty sturdy too. Um, it's not the lightest out there. It's not as light as your Z packs or your Hyperlights or anything like that. But it is. It's definitely much lighter than anything you're going to find at a big box um, sporting goods outdoor store. Uh, so ULA equipment. I'll put the link down below. And uh, if I highly recommend it. So this is the ULA circuit. I think this is the one they sell the most of, and then they have different models as well. But let's go ahead and start with ULA's huge hip belt pockets. I don't have anything in them right now. Um, my right hip belt pocket is usually, it's going to store snacks for the day. Um, sometimes I have a snack on the go. If not, I'll stop. Maybe not take my pack off. It's awesome to be able to reach in there just, just at your hip, pull out a snack, eat a snack so you don't have to take your pack off, rummage through the top, uh, do stuff like that. The other hip belt pocket on the on my left side while I'm wearing the pack uh, usually includes stuff like Ziploc baggies. I have my headlamp in here right now. Um, I'll be taking the black diamond spot. This is the 2016 model spot. Right now it's only available REI. Uh, the difference between the 2016 model and previous models is this new model is 200 lumens as opposed to 160 lumens. So much brighter and the design's a little different, a little more square than uh, than the previous models. So there you go, black diamond spot. Like I said, Ziploc bags, uh, that's a big gallon one for trash. And then I'll put earplugs, I usually have at least one or two lighters in there and then wipes for you know if I gotta go to the bathroom wanna wash my hands I'll also have hand sanitizer but these are wipes from from work uh, Sanicom 3205 by the way I am recording with an Ion Air Pro um, action camera today just doing something a little different if you don't like it comment let me know I know the audio quality is probably going to suck. I'm talking a little louder than normal because I do have the Wi-Fi adapter on the back of it because um, I can see the picture here on my phone so I know that I'm in the shot. But anyway, I'm just testing it out and hopefully it's not too awful for this video. So that's in the other hip belt pocket. Um, I'd probably put my phone in there too if um, while I'm hiking. Going to the outside of the pack, the very, very outside. I carabiner my flip-flops, so I wear these at camp, and I just attach these to the outside of my pack because I really ran out of space on this mesh outside pocket. So this mesh outside pocket on this ULA circuit is awesome. Uh, I fit so much stuff in here, and it leaves so much more room on the inside compartment of your pack. Um, and it's super durable mesh. It's not like bug netting or anything. I mean, this stuff is pretty heavy duty. Still want to be careful with it, but what I have in here, starting at the top, is my, and everything I have in here is stuff I want to have easily accessible. So rain gear, first aid kit, water filtration, stuff like that. So in here I have my rain pants, and these are the Marmot Precip rain pants. The Marmot Precip Rain Jacket. This is the Gulf Coast. Thunderstorms pop up all the time. Uh, the extended forecast for this trip, so I'm about 
a little under two weeks out right now. Um, not much rain is forecasted. There is a little bit. Um, but this is a brand new piece of gear I just picked up at REI, the newest version of the Marmot Precip jacket. Super lightweight. Uh, I haven't tested it out in the rain, but a, you know, Marmot's going to be good. It has a lifetime guarantee. It's all seam taped on the inside. And if I happen to wear all this rain gear, I'll be able to do a review for you guys on the Marmot rain gear. Can't do a review because I have no idea. Um, I just don't know. Uh, Sawyer Squeeze with the plunger, and then I have um, iodine tabs for a backup in case the filter gets clogged to the point where I can't fix it, which I've never had any issues. I've put lots of water through it, clean it after every trip. I store this in, uh, these are vaults, mesh bags. I'll throw a link for those. Got them on Amazon. It comes with like a set of four or five, and they come in all different sizes. So my orange one is my water filtration. Uh, the Goal Zero Nomad 3.5 Solar Charger. Ah, I got this because it was on clearance. There's lighter ones out there. There are bigger ones out there. I haven't been able to charge anything with it. Out in the Sam Houston National Forest, there are way too many trees. Um, even on a sunny day, it just blocks all the sun. So I just... I really got this for the JMT for next year um, to be able to charge stuff on the JMT much longer trip and ideally you're supposed to charge a battery pack with this and then like charge your phone overnight with the battery pack because it doesn't really out put out enough power to consistently charge your phone to where it'll actually do anything but I'm going to take this with me just to keep testing it out so first aid kit uh, lifeline first aid kit I might take this out of this box and just put it in a Ziploc bag just because it takes up room and it weighs more than a Ziploc bag. This is what really charges my stuff on the go. So this is uh, the RAV Power um, battery bank. So this one is the 10,400 milliamp hour. I could probably get four full 100% complete charges on my iPhone with this. So. I may not carry the Goal Zero on this trip. I may just carry this because I am going to shoot video and take pictures with my iPhone. Maybe use this Ion Pro camera. I don't know. I just honestly just only carry all that stuff. This is a Tyvek, a piece of Tyvek, and this is a smaller one that I use to put my backpack and all of my stuff on. That's when I get to camp and I'm taking it out of my backpack. So that's one for just. Stuff. Tyvek is awesome. It's super lightweight. It's super cheap if you can just swing by a construction site and ask for a big piece of it. You can just cut it out. So this other bigger piece is my ground sheet for my tent. And um, I just cut it to size for the tent. Again, super lightweight. It packs down I don't know, fairly small. And it's waterproof and its its purpose is to insulate houses. It's, it's a wrap to insulate or provide a, la a layer of insulation when you're building a house. So it insulates really well. And then the bottom of the uh, mesh, I have the maps for the Lone Star Hiking Trail. I don't plan on getting lost. It's, fairly, it's actually really well marked. Um, but, you know, never know. It just gives me something to look at at night, I guess, if I'm bored. I want to look at uh, some, some stuff. Do some planning, some last minute planning on the trail. All right, let's go inside of the ULA circuit. So the ULA circuit has a latch on the top, has your two side uh, straps, compression straps, and it has, the top closes like a dry bag, so it rolls down. Again, if you haven't seen my video on this backpack, I did a review on it, or an initial impressions, and uh, I've used it on a few trips already, absolutely love it. It's awesome. Buy one. I mean, if they're a little expensive, but I can't tell it's on my back while I'm walking compared to other stuff I've carried in the past. But anyway, uh, starting at the top, I got my GSI coffee mug. Inside of the GSI coffee mug, I have uh, just a, a washcloth for cleaning, whatever, and the 
Etexity stove. So it's a tiny little ultralight canister stove. Amazon, 10 bucks. And I haven't had any issues with it yet. I've gone through a whole canister of gas so far, just testing it. And I uh, haven't had any issues. It has an electronic ignition. And that all fits inside of my cup. So that saves some space. There is a printed out or a, a text version of this gear list on my new website at sky2trail.com. And I'll put that down there on the bottom as well. New website, new blog. Please go check it out. Subscribe. Um, I try to write a couple posts a week, blog posts, just about my trips, what I'm doing, um, stuff I'm testing out, reviews, uh, written reviews, as opposed to writing out reviews on the description box of YouTube. Um, and then these videos are usually linked in the blog as well, so go check that out. I'll have a link to the site. This is my toiletry bag slash extra batteries. So in here I have a toothbrush I snapped in half, some One Wipe Charlies. I'm a Dollar Shave Club, Dollar Shave Club subscriber, so um, I, I get the One Wipe Charlies. They have aloe and they're nice just for cleaning up uh, in the morning or at night before you go to bed. Toilet paper. Take plenty of toilet paper, hand sanitizer, a little travel tube of toothpaste, and again, a um, toothbrush that I, I snap in half because, you know, two grams makes a difference. This is the fire bag. I'm thinking about ditching the bag, but this has a small um, light my fire striker in there, some tin foil as a windscreen in case I ever need one, and a few wet fire tabs and some waterproof matches. I'll usually have another like two lighters in here as well. Um, but that's the that's the fire starting fire bag. Gas canister for the stove. The Sea to Summit X Pot 1.3 liter liter kettle. Uh, I did a review on this. Actually I think that was the one I did right before this one. Collapses down to uh, a small little package there. Only weighs a little over six and a half ounces. Has a lid. Great for boiling. You can boil um, water for, you know, a meal and a drink, or two meals if you want. So if you want to make breakfast, you can boil your water for your oatmeal and your coffee. Holds enough water for that. Um, some 550 cord for throwing uh, the food bag up into a tree to get it away from the little little critters. This is my XPED medium-sized air pillow. Um, by far, this is probably the least favorite piece of gear in my pack. It's not comfortable, but it's super small and it's super light. Um, I haven't done a review on it yet, just because I'm not excited about it. So, But anyway, that's what I use as a pillow. Oh, I think that's it for this that stuff. Alright, so... All of that stuff sits on top of this plastic um, luggage bag that you would get from the airport. Uh, ULA recommends you use a trash compactor bag, and I might get some eventually, but the thing with trash compactor bags is you're going to have to buy a pack of 10, and they're kind of expensive, and I don't want to buy a pack of 10, so I'm going to have to, I want to find somebody that maybe has a trash compactor so I can just take a trash compactor bag. So anyway, you can get these bags at the airport, and this is what they would throw your car seat in or your backpack if you wanted to check your backpack and not worry about your straps getting caught in belt loaders or getting destroyed by ramp, uh, ramp personnel and stuff like that. Because, I mean, they're just on a... I work for an airline, and honestly, they're just not very nice to bags. So, just the truth. Um, this is my clothes bag, and here I have my... Long sleeve shirt, an extra pair of socks, an extra pair of underwear. And I really don't think I'm going to take any more than that. So, clothes bag, and I have it in my Hennessy hammock uh, stuff set. So, again, all this stuff is in this plastic bag, so it doesn't get wet. Because I don't, I don't use a pack cover, so it's just to keep everything dry. This is the, my newest purchase. Um... I went ahead and I'm going to switch from the Big Agnes Double Z for a while. I'm going to go with the Thermarest Evo Light. This, this is the Thermarest Evo Light 
self-inflatable pad. Um, I was sold on it by an REI guy, a guy that works at REI. This is the lightest self-inflating pad with, with a little bit of R value that they had in the store. Um, I wanted to lay on the Sea to Summit ultralight or the ultralight insulated, but they didn't have any. They had this in stock. I was able to lay on it. I liked it. It's self-inflatable as opposed to the big net, big Agnes four inch thick one where you got to blow it up for five minutes. I just don't want to do that every day. Uh, I've decided anymore. So um, I've decided that this is comfortable enough for me. It's two and a half inches thick and it has an RR value of, I believe it's 3.2 and it weighs 17 ounces. So super light and it's, it's insulated. Whereas the big Agnes is not insulated. It's November now. I'll be through hiking at the end of November. Although this is the Gulf Coast and the South, it's getting cooler and it's going to be cold at night. So I want to have a little bit of insulation. And I'll be in a tent as well. I'm not going to do a hammock for this trip. I will be in a tent. The tent. Uh, this will be the first trip with this tent. Uh, I set it up outside a few times to practice. I recommend everybody do that with all of your gear. If you buy new gear, unless you absolutely 100% know how it works, don't go out, like don't go out with a new tent on a six day hike, hike all day, get to your camp with five minutes of sunlight left and try to set up your brand new tent. It's kind of dumb. So I have set this up a few times. This is the Henry Shire's Tark Tent. Tark Tent is the brand and this is the Pro Trail. It's a one person tent. You can maybe even fit two smallish sized people in there. Um, it's way bigger than my Alpine, my Alps mountaineering one person tent. And this thing weighs one pound, 10 ounces. Like this is lighter. This thing's lighter than um, my sleeping bag. So really excited about that. And it uses trekking poles to, to set up. So I will be using trekking poles. All right, very bottom. Like I said, heavier than my tent is my sleeping pad, uh, bag. This is the Mountain Hardware Lamina Z Spark 34 degree synthetic down bag. I believe this weighs just a little over two pounds, and it, it it's a pretty good little size once you get it in the stuff sack. I was also I was talked into this by an REI employee as well. It's a great value bag. It's $160, I believe, right now at REI for the men's Spark, Lamina Z Spark. A little over two pounds, and it comes with comes with a stuff sack. So a lot of sleeping bags uh, it's, that are synthetic or in this price range aren't going to come with a stuff sack. So you're going to have to pay another 20 bucks for like a Sea to Summit stuff sack or something to, to put your sleeping bag in. So... The stuff sack was a selling point. The fact that it, it suit, it's light and it's a um, 34 degree bag. It's really all I need here in this part of the country any time of year. Of course, in the summertime, I, don't, I really don't need a sleeping bag at all. Um, I may take a liner with me just in case it gets cold, cold, like close to 34. Because of, of course, these, these ratings are never, they're not, there's no sort of national sleeping bag, uh, federal government, sleeping bag temperature rating. This is all in-house um, in testing for all of these ratings, no matter what sleeping bag you buy. So keep that in mind. These numbers on sleeping bags are not regulated by anybody. They're not guaranteed. So don't go on a trip with a zero degree bag when you know it's gonna be a low of five degrees and expect to be warm because you probably won't. All right. So Mountain Hardware Lamina Z Spark, great bag. Uh, I believe this is only available at REI. So there you go. All my REI plugs for today. So that's my base load. Um, I don't think I forgot anything in there. Again, there's food. So there's probably going to be so six days, five nights of food will be about 12 pounds of food. Um, and at any the most water I'll carry is four liters of water, so it's probably about nine pounds of water. So that's 20 pounds of consumables. Plus this, um, the, the, all the stuff I just pulled out of here probably weighs about 15 pounds. So 35 pounds. And that's what ULA recommends for this bag. 
uh, the circuit. They, they really recommend that you carry no more than 35 pounds. Uh, I think I've had more than 35 pounds and it's done just fine. But uh, that's that's what they recommend. So I think I'm right at 35 pounds with my with my complete full pack weight food, water, and and gear. And uh, super excited. I'm glad to. This is my first through hike. Not only is it my first through hike, it's my first solo through hike. And um, Lone Star Hiking Trail. If you haven't seen my other videos about it, or um, I did a, a trip with a buddy of mine. It's 96 miles long. It starts in Richards, Texas, which is west of Lake Conroe. And it goes all the way across to um, Cleveland, Texas. So 96 miles up north of the lake and, and over. Longest hiking trail in Texas. And so far, all the sections I've done and uh, overnight trips, it's really nice. All the campsites are fairly clean, very nice. Um, lots of spiders, but I have a feeling they'll all be dead by the end of November. And I've only seen a few snakes. I've heard stories about the pigs, I haven't seen any pigs, I haven't had any pigs in camp, uh, so I'm not super worried about that. Uh, I'm not worried about animals, we don't have bears down here, we don't have, we have coyotes, I haven't seen any wolves. Bobcats are few in number, but supposedly they're coming back, um, but I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, that's going to be over the week of Thanksgiving, so we'll be having Thanksgiving dinner on the trail. And uh, yeah, so I'm super excited about it. I'll try and record as much as I can with, with the limited battery that I'm going to have on the trip. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll try and keep everything charged, and I'll try and give you guys a, maybe a four-part video series on the trail. So anyway, that is my pack load for the Lone Star Hiking Trail. Uh, if you want to check out the Lone Star Hiking Trail, go to LoneStarTrail.org. Um, check it out there. They have the maps, all the parking information, where the trailheads are, where the campsites are, and uh, information on how to join the Lone Star Hiking Trail Club. So 20 bucks a year, you can join the club. They do hikes every Saturday morning um, out on the trail. So you can either just go and hike, you can join them and do maintenance, and um, just you know help help keep the trail going. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about any of the gear that I showed you today on the um, in my bag, go to my website www.sky2trail all spelled out, .com, and um, there's an article there on my complete gear load for this trip. I don't think I forgot anything in this video, but if I did, it's on the website. Please go check it out, subscribe, um, and uh, thanks for watching. So also, subscribe to this channel, and you'll be getting more videos from me as well. So uh, be sure to like and all that good stuff. Uh, Richard, Outdoor Tech Stuff. And uh, everything's going great here. Hope you're having a great day. And uh, see you later.